Welcome, everybody. It's Alan Andres here uh, on It's Zoo Time. I'm the founder of uh, Zoo Coins, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here with another episode. Today's episode is episode 11, where we talk about the Zoobot progress development, the node scalability. We give a, uh, I give a very good update as to where uh, we've been and uh, where we're going, and some uh, looking at some of the issues of the current uh, crypto uh, world. And uh, all in line, I guess, of that um, that collapse of FTX, the exchange based out of the Bahamas. Fantastic to be back, guys. Haven't been, uh, even though uh, here we are, 16th of November, 2022. It's been a, a long year, but um, this this is a major update. So uh, strap yourself in, go and grab that uh, cup of coffee if you need to. And uh, let's have a, a chat as we lead up to, uh, really, this is probably the Christmas message that I'm doing, um, and make sure that all your questions are answered in this one um, one big update that we're going to go through. Um, really excited to be here today, everybody. It's um, you, you, the, the excitement around the, the space and where the crypto world's up to. It really, uh, you know, gets everything, uh, the adrenaline going, and uh, can't wait to share that with you. So I have made some notes today because there's uh, quite a few things that I want to go through and I'll uh, look at those and come back to you. But certainly let's talk about the uh, progress report in terms of the um, uh, development on the development side with the wallet uh, as we stand. So for everybody, uh, we're currently at version 167. Can you believe that? 167 upgrades, which have been every one of those has been significant and a milestone in its own right. As we've gone through, so the uh, the last couple of upgrades which were done uh, really were in relation to Android, and uh, you may or may not have noticed, but a lot of the hardware issues in terms of just the pasting uh, that's been upgraded, which gives us the uh, the auto paste permission uh, functionalities in that, which uh, solves those, and that's uh, the Android users, Samsung would certainly find that a much more enjoyable uh, process as you're going through transferring zoo coins. The uh, the other one uh, earlier that we related to the, uh, and that was fully completed and deployed by the way, so that's working 100%, well done to the dev team. Um, the other one re related to the, the backup issues. So no issues from the product, I can tell you now, we've had 100% success rate in the way in which the system and the wallets uh, and the transfer of peer-to-peer uh, -peer on the coins and the delivery of those coins, et cetera, is working absolutely perfect. The logging and tracking, we are delighted with. Uh, again, we just circle back to human error. Now, as far as I'm aware of the database, which I'll talk about that in a minute, in terms of the stats, of that total database, we've only had three uh, users that uh, through human error have lost their coins. Um, every coin is significant, and uh, whilst these were, were a small number of coins, they are significant to the individuals that, uh, that had acquired the zoo coins. So um, one of the things that has been in play is the way in which the, the reminders uh, occur in the wallets. That's both for the, um, the, you know, the way in which the download works for the uh, Apple uh, and also for the Androids. So it's, it is really in your face the moment that you uh, are aware of uh, a new wallet. It's in your face in terms of backing up uh, uh, from an existing wallet holder's perspective. And more importantly, uh, it is a continuous reminder of the significance of, uh, you know, backing these things up. Um, and then re obviously you can restore them. So uh, if you do get a new wallet, then you will certainly see that the, uh, the new wallet um, gives you a reminder, uh, obviously at the time of uh, uh, post downloading and also doing your first transactions. So you really can't uh, in any way uh, not be aware of the significance that we're pressing in terms of the backups. Now, whilst that's a very low uh, rate in terms of uh, lost coins, um, we would have loved to have seen that at 100%, but nevertheless, there's lessons to be learned, and um, that's that's how life goes with these things. That we're doing everything humanly possible we can to make that uh, user experience of the peers as uh, as good as possible. Um, but more importantly, 
you know, the security of that uh, leads to the way in which you behave with the wallet you've got. So earlier today, we just sent out a notice of the wallet link. So I'm just making a reminder to you, whilst we haven't uh, activated the invite button, uh, we have sent out again an email. Now I'd strongly recommend you to bookmark it. It is the link to get a new wallet. Don't go rushing around getting new wallets now if your wallet's all fine and the coins are there and you're happy and you've backed up. Um, now when I talk about backup, let's make sure that it, it's the worst case scenario is you've either got it on your phone and best case scenarios, you've offloaded that to a USB or it's on your computer hard drive. Uh, and you are not just, you know, reliant upon one backup. You can do multiple backups and then store these things. You know, if you're happy to put it in a, in a safe or vault, we'll do so. Because uh, when I talk a bit later on about where the world's going with existing protocols and wallets and things, um, some people around the world have had some disasters because the developers haven't taken the time that we've done uh, in order to make it safe and sound for the user experience and retention of those crypto or the crypto asset being your zoo coin. So uh, bookmark that wallet download link. Um, you know, keep it to a minimal, but certainly you can share that link with some family and friends and you can give them the experience as well. And, um, and you can also transact and trade amongst each other with your coins as a peer-to-peer -peer platform, which is what it was designed for. So uh, by all means, um, keep that because even if you, uh, you've got a backup um, and you want to get uh, and you lose your wallet, then of course you can uh, download a brand new wallet and then just restore the backup and it'll override the, uh, the old uh, or the new uh, address and it will replace all that data in that new wallet and you're off and running again. So uh, just have a look at Gmails. If you say you haven't got Gmails, we know you've got them because we log the emails and just check your spam boxes or junk mail and uh, it'll be there. Uh, and again, please send a note to support at zoocoins.com. Try and keep the emails to a minimal because there's a power of work that goes on in the support. Uh, it's very tiring, long hours, and um, all about at the end, of the, the objective at the end of the day is minimizing the workload that we have as we're now excited about the coins going out. So let's talk some stats about uh, the current position. We have, a, in a general sense, we've got currently 3,266 active wallet users with coins. Uh, and they are busily uh, moving coins around with each other in, in a secure two-factor authentication, which is a global uniqueness to zoo coins, everybody. And I'll press this point a bit later uh, as we delve into some of the current news that's affecting uh, the crypto space. But from our perspective, the long wait that you had for us to perfect this two-factor authentication, that's the time lock situation, and that's the certainty between a sender and receiver is a world-class uh, development. And it's having far more greater ramifications now than ever before. So that's the, the, the uh, database at the moment. And we're very happy to, that, that we've got uh, very little correspondence coming through from issues or problems in relation to that. So if you uh, get excited and you do a transfer, and the red uh, um, message comes up, the error message, well, then there's an error either in terms of uh, where your, your battery of your phone may be low, uh, there's issues that may be with the Wi-Fi uh, or connectivity, uh, or certainly you've inputted the wrong uh, paste and code or data, and we can rest assured we know that it's uh, user error, not the platform having a problem. The platform hasn't got any problems with the, the firepower and capabilities of the transactions. That is uh, to protect the coins, that uh, it knows there's no double spend and there's no errors that are flowing from the peers. So uh, just bear that in mind, be patient with that if that's the case, but we haven't had those sort of errors come through, uh, which is a great sign for the testing over the last uh, six or seven months in particular. So we bundle that up, the wallet, the coins that have, are currently with people, uh, fantastic. We couldn't uh, be more blessed in terms of how that's progressing and working. And that uh, really lends lend strength to the protocol that's being built, which is, again, um, there's no, as far as we're aware, there's nothing like this product in the world that delivers 
uh, all of the attributes that we've talked about. And li literally coming from the very first day of our development spec in April of 2018, when the project commenced. So we can tick all those boxes as we go. Now, there are 400 um, ZooCoin buyers, and some of you have said, well, we wait to the listing on the exchange, which sort of encouraging you a bit more to uh, get your wallets uh, and get your coins and just wrap that up. So uh, I think last night, for example, we had another 80 emails go out and we had only 19 or 20 responses back of people. So you've paid money for these coins. Uh, they're very valuable and it's time now to stump up in terms of getting your wallet. Don't be scared of it. Follow the download processes, follow the backup processes, tick the boxes. And because we're doing a full audit on that one-on-one -on -one transfer of those coins, we know exactly 100% of each and every buyer that's got their coins. There's no excuses. So um, just follow that. If that those 400 who they know who they are, just keep coming back to us that, yes, now's the time to uh, you know, come out and, uh, and put yourself in a position where you can uh, receive those coins. And we just want to wrap that up, get that out of the way. Uh, and that's the full database then locked down in terms of the transfers uh, with full audit processes in play. Very important. And uh, hence, uh, another reason why we just sent out now that link for downloading a wallet. So again, bookmark that, keep that uh, uh, handy, and then you can always get a wallet whenever you like. Uh, you don't have to come into support and ask, where's the wallet? In fact, there was seven emails that I saw today going back uh, that have given that link and would be contained within other emails. But to save you go looking for it, that's why that's gone through. So please, uh, let's see those people come good. Now, that's got no impact on where we're going. Don't get that wrong. I'm not uh, suggesting that we're chasing 400 people down. And that's going to impact anything to do with our progress in terms of wanting to list on exchanges. Uh, but it'd be nice to get that out of the way. And then everybody's uh, done and dusted, ready for when we do list on the exchange. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, coming back to the Australian Crypto Convention, that was a fantastic uh, uh, in, uh, process for us and the entire team. The entire team went up there. You would have seen some of the videos. And we had Marte and Sam come out from Europe, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, the boys are well and truly now got their heads on how how strong and powerful this uh, processes and protocol that we've built and what the coins mean long term. Uh, and it was wonderful to have them share that experience because the Queensland uh, crypto convention was where we were able to put in play and test the way it works with the retail or space. That is the, the consumers in general. And the age spread of that really started at 15 through to about 87. So it was very important for us to get a feel for the way the processes work, which I've just described. And the results were quite staggering, actually. Now, if you think about it, yes, we were giving away one free ZooCoin with a download wallet for those that attended the convention. Uh, it's estimated there was 2,500 attendees, which was fantastic over that couple of days period. Now, in that process, just bear in mind, in order for us to uh, manually, if you like, transfer a coin from a support staff member to an interested person uh, that attended the convention, um, we had a QR code and the QR code successfully allowed them to instantly download the wallet. You may have already seen some of that as well. And that allowed them to then complete a form for registration, which was basically taking in their uh, wallet address, their phone number, uh, so that they could then go to the support and have a coin transferred. Now, just think about that process, that there's a friction point of filling out a form. Now, uh, generally, there's industry numbers that suggest that once you get a consumer to a form and whatever length that may be, you've got very much split seconds to capture the imagination of that consumer in order to complete that form. And that's, we've all done it. You know, you get, you get a form and you get halfway through or you don't even look at it and you just let it go. Now, the consensus is that's generally around 2.5% conversion success rate. So QR code, you, you, uh, you download the form, you fill the form, then you get the, the wallet, then you take that, and then you get the coin. Now, for the team, they, it's a highly commendable outcome for us because out of that outcome, we receded just on 750 QR code wallets 
that were scanned, which is a 30% take up. So just think about that. And this is all coming back to the strategies I've had, which is all in the it's zoo time episodes. And you know, you're invited to go back and listen to those because a lot of those things are coming to fruition now, especially what we talked about with uh, you know, the the volatility in the marketplace, both crypto and the normal financial sector. So that is a massive uh, take up, given that people needed to go through those processes. Of that, of that, we got 14, uh, 350, there's 350 that then were patient enough and wanted to receive the coin. So overall, it was a 14% success strike rate of completion, the full deliverable. That is wallet and coin going through that registration process. And manually done, by the way. So, two point three to two point five percent is is treated as a uh, a big upside. Fourteen percent is treated as a process that says, "Well, um, that's that's phenomenal." Now, those numbers will correlate to the earlier it's zoo time uh, episodes where I talk about the mass marketing distribution that I'm very much intent on, and now have the comfort to see how that's going to roll out. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute, which is the significance of the Zubot as well, uh, if you're looking at mass distribution, both in terms of wallet and coin acquisition and or transfer. So to the team, congratulations. It was a fantastic response and feedback. Uh, we had some larger players that have been coming to us now and also uh, working through the roadmap we've got so that they can see with the, uh, the ultimate outcome in terms of what Zubot means across the entire platform, not just the exchanges. You know, I know everybody's excited about that, but more importantly as to what we see the, the benefits of the Zubot are uh, longer term. Now, just briefly on the ZooCoin, which we say and is clearly built on the split chain protocol, which is a layer one protocol. We've talked about this at length. I won't go into the technical side of that, but that's, that's quite a significant development in the success of that we're at right here and now today, because it means that developers and other parties can build on that platform, which encourage the usage of the ZooCoin as your identifier or smart contracts that come into play because of the scalability. The scalability is very significant and important in this particular crypto space that we're dealing with when you look at the blockchain. We have something very special. The way the nodes only cache that information, that is the last two transactions, takes the pressure off the network, which allows the peers to do the heavy lifting in terms of the validation and the processes they've got with their own coins. But it also importantly protects the peer from what's happening today in the crypto space. I'll talk about that in a minute. The bottom line is right now, here and now, the split chain ZooCoin processes network is live it's 100 percent live there's wallets there's coins there's transactions already happening within that environment peer-to-peer -peer, and that's that's already going where the peers are dictating their own transaction values and doing deals and things amongst themselves we see a lot of that in queensland in particular but that's live the peer-to-peer -peer functionality is live and working perfectly you can't lose the coin in terms of transition because you always know the recipient and the recipients in that time lock. That's the greatest uniqueness to the ZooCoin split chain protocol. You won't see that anywhere else, I can assure you. But you can see it as you now look at your ZooCoins and you now see the wallets. Uh, it's not near perfection, but I tell you, it's as close as it could be in terms of what we've done to dumb down all aspects that I wanted to achieve, even with all of the, the, the testing and the logging and processes and the hard yards that we've done over the last 12 months. Very delighted, in fact, in relation to how we sit right now. So the roadmap, uh, the team has been uh, ex expanding the roadmap, roadmap so that you actually see the, the length of completed tasks because when I generalise, to get to this point, yes, we're at version 167. There's an incredible amount of dev work that goes on behind the scenes to get it to 167. And in fact, some of the commentary is that because we've dumbed it down so much, it's hard to believe that there's much work done at all. Now, 
you know, the analogy of that is, I guess, it, you've got a nice shiny Ferrari, but you can just imagine the work that goes into the engine and, and the interior of the Ferrari. It just doesn't get slapped together. So we need people to think about that a little bit more uh, because that's what is the winning position in terms of globalising the wallets and zoo coins, which then affects uh, our day-to-day -day lives as to this decentralised cryptocurrency. So scalability, security and decentralisation have been and will continue to be the problems in relation to blockchain, not in relation to split chain with what's been developed. So very proud of the team and uh, thrilled to say the fact is it's live and you can go out, you know, as I said on that link, go and share a few uh, wallets with friends and family and try it and use it and transfer coins and, and trade amongst yourselves. That's the purpose of the decentralized platform. That's the mission in relation to what we wanted to achieve with the peers. So you can use your zoo coins anytime you like in terms of the peer trading. Uh, you can go outside and you can talk to a merchant and say, listen, I want to buy those uh, products. Uh, can you download a zoo coin wallet and I'll transfer you some coins? So don't, don't sit back. The whole purpose of decentralization is exactly that. The responsibilities do rest with the peers. So don't sit back because at the end of the day, once this process is completed, as I said long ago, long ago, the great dream I have is there's no support desk for zoo coins because it's decentralized. There's no good relying on me. The network, the developers, the businesses, the peers, they will be able to take the opportunity of doing as they see fit with the zoo coins. So if you put enough pressure on merchants directly whilst we're building out what we need to do to give that connectivity, there's nothing stopping anybody uh, talking to. We, we've got a couple of coffee shops already have downloaded wallets and, and are accepting payments over the counter. So don't stress about saying this in terms of that, what can you do with the zoo coins? You can, you can do the current peer-to-peer -peer vision of what Bitcoin was all about originally beyond that because it's so flexible to get those wallets out and about and where you go. Now, we've got, we've got guys in Queensland who've bought a solar system, a truck, all sorts of bits and pieces amongst themselves as peers. Nothing to do with me, nothing to do with uh, anything to do with any centralisation. There's no intermediary. There's nothing involved. We get a phone call and next thing it turns out, wait, wow, they've just now bought uh, an asset by transferring to someone else, the third party, the coins, because both sender and receiver clearly know that they've received the coins and they've given the goods. Now, that doesn't say that we're not here to, to, to create the, the business strategies that I put in play. We're doing it now. All, go back to its zoo time. And each episode, I talk about our globalization model and what we see and how we're going to achieve that outcome. So I'll, I'll talk about that again in the tick, just to refresh your memories so that you can all understand the, the motivation and the points of what we're doing uh, as we now successfully achieve the live rollout of zoo coins. Now that comes back to the priority developments, which then leads into those motivations. And, and each of us have a different motivation as to the, the zoo coin where, we, where we're going. The first absolute top priority uh, development with the dev team is a Zubot. Now, the Zubot, you've got to understand, encases a whole world environment of software that sits underneath, a bit like the Ferrari engine that I talked about. Okay? So the Zubot allows this connectivity because we can remember at the end of the day, everything we've built is to be released as open source code. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean simply that that's what Decentralize is about. If you go back to our strategy, we've got what's called a PWA wallet. It's a progressive web app. And it was designed specifically for good reason, because it's not in the iStore and it's not in the Google Store. It's not reliant on third parties to say yes or no, this wallet can be upgraded or downgraded or, or released. That's one example of true decentralization. The power of the wallet is in the hands of all those that wish to participate in the code. Now, someone will come along, love the software code, the open source code, and build a better wallet. They'll have all sorts of trinkets and features in it. 
Nothing to do with me. But that's the whole purpose of the decentralization. And you're not at the behest of the giants, as Apple has recently done, and shut down apps and wallets relating to crypto that says, okay, we're not interested in that. Therefore, we won't put it in the store. Where do you go when you want an upgrade? And where do you go when you want to use it? That won't happen with the ZooCoin wallet. It was deliberately designed for that reason. And in, importantly, because the whole structure is free. If you build on the protocol, if you build on the split chain, and there's developers talking to us since the convention, so excited because the code uh, is, is normal code in the sense that you don't need uh, Rusk or you don't need uh, Solidity and you don't need to be an expert in Ethereum, which is a very small market share in terms of code developers. It's open to everybody. And that means because you can have fractionalization transfers, there's no fees, there's no costs. You can build layers and layers on that and those people can make money. As an example, you're holding some zoo coins. You've decided that you want to improve the value of that yourselves. You decide to get out of the room and ring a software developer. And you say, listen, I'll use my some of my zoo coin fractions to create UDAs, we call them unique digital assets, not NFTs, because that market's already imploding, which I warned everybody many, many months ago, and it's, it's a zoo time episode. I put that warning out there. But a UDA, which has the attributes that protects the, the copyright, the integrity of the, of the design, et cetera, for uh, the way in which that operates, they can build these things, make money, and create a value-added product. It's a bit like, the analogy is a bit like the farmer. The farmer is content to grow wheat. The paddocks are ploughed, the wheat comes up, they sell the wheat on the market, and that's the price they get. That's the lower uh, analogy if you look at a zoo coin in its purest form. But if someone else comes along and says, well, I'll crush that up and I'll make some flour. So the next guy in the chain is making money well, way above the price of the, the wheat tonnage to make flour. And the third guy comes along and says, well, I'm going to turn that into cakes. And there's another layer. That's the whole. And finally, of course, you've got the retail where Woolley says, well, we're going to charge you, you know, 50 times more than anything because we're selling the product to you. So there's a supply chain and the same theory uh, applies with the crypto space if you do it right. You can't build on things like Ethereum and make a lot of money quickly in that sense of NFTs, which there are all sorts of scams and things going in relation to that. That's another issue. But the cost is so great. The gas fees are high. Four or $500 in gas fees. There's no fees. So the Zubot allows us to explore well beyond what we need just for the exchange. Now, a couple of things on that. The connectivity is crucial. And that con connectivity of what is built in the Zubot, and we've, we're flat out building that because that is the priority, as I said, to finish that now, get that done, and then satisfy one element, one motive of the usage case of that Zubot, which in itself will also be uh, open source code. Because we've got six exchanges that are that are coming at us all the time, despite the collapse of FTX, they're looking for revenue sources. Despite all that, what they love about the zoo coin is that there's absolute certainty and security in terms of the transfer of the coin because none of the zoo coins, as I said before, sit on an exchange. Now, some of our, our uh, great zoo coin buyers, they, they want to rush in and, of course, you know, get them listed and away you go. Now, if we'd have done that with FTX in Australia, that last count, which... Uh, hot off the press today. We've got administrators in FTX in Australia. Uh, and for those who don't know, FTX is, uh, was one of the top two, or if not the biggest exchange in the world. Uh, Sam uh, Bankman Freed, or Fried, uh, was the CEO and owner of that. And there are 30,000 local FTX Australian customers that now have their coins and or cash locked up and can't get their money or, or cash or crypto assets because the coins have to reside with the exchanges. Remember what I said about the strategy with zoo coins. The peer controls 
similar to the PWA wallet, every aspect of the coin, the wallet, the transfers in your possession. And that means that with the Zubot, it's designed that the exchanges can only read the coins that you've got available, just to confirm, and conduct the transaction with a Zubot peer transfers directly to another peer, even though it's going through the exchange. No coins reside with the exchange. It's a non-custodial process. You wouldn't have had any risks listing on the exchanges. Now, that's why the current exchanges we've got, yes, they are they are really keen to see the, the Zubot ASAP, and it'll be done uh, in the processes to make sure, as we've done right today to, to the current live Zucoin wallet and and zoo coins themselves in the network, and it'll be done in uh, in good course is what we're doing, so that there are no gaping holes that cause problems at the end of the day. Because it's not just the existing zoo coin buyers; it's the new buyers that come into play that want the same comfort and level, knowing the open source code on all aspects of what we've done, from the wallet through to the zoo bot. So, behind the scenes, everybody. The Zubot is very, very much front and centre of exactly our last components that we want to complete. I mean, there's projects going on beyond that that we're doing, but certainly we've had, uh, given the, the lead up times, where we're at with everything, the biggest thing everyone comes down is saying, let's set a date. Now, I've got a, uh, an email today, which is fine. And the concerns, there's a number of concerns, which is fine. and. Um, the main thing about it is, put it. can you put a date? Can you put a date? Now, no, I can't put a date. I can give you now some pretty good indications given the knowledge we have and the successes we've had without the distractions of the upgrades in the wallets to make that perfect. But um, every time we put dates and uh, the dates were delayed, like the, del the day of the delivery of the wallet, for example, then there's criticism because you don't meet those dates. But what I can do, which is what we've discussed with the dev team over the last week or so, is that we're plowing through, we're working through the Christmas break, and we're going to put with the roadmap that in quarter one, 2023, we want the Zubot completed, not just for everybody's say, interest in the exchanges, uh, that's of great interest to everyone else, and of course that creates a benchmark, but certainly for me, that's not the greatest priority in terms of what I want to use the Zubot for. And I'll talk about my motivation in terms of the Zubot. So, Think about that. What we're looking at is Zubot node scalability, done and dusted, that is software tested, logging, completed, integrations between sometime between today and the end of that quarter one, which is 31 March. Now, hopefully it's earlier than that, but that gives a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, extra provisioning, I guess, if anything goes wrong with that, because remember, with the Zubot completed, each of the exchanges and their dev teams then come into play. So we've done an estimation of what we think their teams will do, given the current environment, but they are wanting the product to be integrated. We've had other exchanges come to us, which we've knocked back. Uh, and thank goodness we've knocked back a couple that look like they're in trouble. Uh, because at the end of the day, you could have had the zoo coins listed and lose the lot because the exchange itself still has to pay you. You know, they don't have your coins. We've solved that problem but we can't solve the integrity of an exchange in getting a delivery of your money because most of the exchanges there's now, uh, the bigger ones are saying that the withdrawals are being withheld both in terms of fiat as well as coins. So the Zubot, again, is the critical component that links your wallets to the exchange using the unique software that delivers those outcomes. You cannot get on an exchange without the Zubot because the Zubot allows the processes. If there's a million transactions, the Zubot can't sit there in the way it's provisioning from peer to peer, the 90 second time locks in order to process. So it's got to accommodate both the security. That is, like the exchanges don't get to keep your coins. That always resides with the peer. And secondly, if there's a million buyers that the system works efficiently at so many thousands of transactions or tens of thousands of transactions per second in order to process those transactions. That's what the Zubot means. It's in, in other words, it's like an API 
that they, the MasterCard connects to the banks. Now, some of the MasterCard, if you start out fresh and you want to start processing, it can take three or four months. There's a whole lot of processes. We don't have any more due diligence to do, but we certainly got our side is the Zubot to complete. So somewhere between now and the end of quarter one, 2023, which for everybody is a 31 March, that's the processes. Now, the exchange risks are based on trust. Uh, I don't have a problem with the exchanges in terms of the ones we've looked at. Bitrix is one of the biggest ones. It hasn't been in the news. The ones we've identified, we're very comfortable with. What I'm comfortable with is, is that at the time of which you get paid, that comes from the exchange. Now, there's no guarantees in the, in the world in terms of any, I mean, there's no guarantees with banks. Uh, you know, 654 US banks in the last 16 years went down the toilet. Many may recall way back in the pyramid days, the pyramid building society went down in Victoria. So there's no guarantees on this, in this particular environment. The guarantees we can do is that you're at the highest level of security with your wallet and zoo coins. And if you don't trade, you don't deliver your coins. So you don't lose them. So I'd invite you to think about the FTX drama that everybody said, I mean, the, the powerhouse investors behind FTX, and you're talking billions of dollars, you know, you're talking a $50 billion collapse. They were very comfortable with FTX. So there's nobody there in the world that says that they can look after you in terms of, you know, what you can ultimately trust or not trust in terms of those third parties. So the risk... The risk is the way in which you deal with people. So you put it, let's put it down to a smaller peer, peer group basis. If you want to transact with your family and send some coins and they promise to pay you the fiat as a result of that coin, that's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. You are reliant upon the other person to pay you the fiat. That's the risk. There's always a risk. So... The other questions in relation to that, certainly coming back to, will we lose market opportunity in terms of getting the coin out and about for a listing purpose on the exchange? Uh, there's no way that's going to happen of losing an opportunity because there's no one that's built and can build the, the split lock uh, protocol. It's a complete differential to blockchain. The world has gone down one path. We have miners, you have blocks, there's a whole lot of technical analysis in terms of how that operates and how it validates and the algorithms and even the miners are going broke because the price of Bitcoin has gone down. So you could very well find, as I've said in earlier Zoo Time episodes, that you may end up with some Bitcoin and you could never process the things. Then what do you do? Doesn't happen with the Zoo Coin or Split Chain. The peers are the processors, the nodes simply cache sufficient information within the network that makes sure that the deliverable is there's no double spend and that there's verification of the balance in relation to those coins, the digital asset that's been held. So that's that's the differential there. So worrying about market share is of no concern to me whatsoever in terms of competitors or what's happening. Because when you build something for free and you can build on top of it, you're encouraging that competitors to be part of what you're built. There's no money to be made in relation to the uh, ongoing product lines that may be built from us in-house here. Our motivation is that the staff, the team, we all have zoo coins, and the motivation is to globalise the mass adoption of those coins, which then will help those, obviously, on the exchange. So the important thing is, if you went to an exchange tomorrow and listed, and there's no buying support, guess what will happen? It'll be like FTX. That's why from day dot, go back to my zoo time, the money, the time we've spent in relation to creating a, an easy, accessible download wallet. You won't find a wallet far more accessible and simple than the ZooCoin wallet. I'd invite you to try and download or even go and buy a Ledger wallet or MetaMask or uh, one of those uh, wallets and just see how long it takes you to install the thing compared to how quick you can install our wallet. That's the, that's the advantage we have. And it's, it's free, it's open source.
Uh, and just a final one on that, the commentary about whether or not, um, you know, the integration, the, the developers of these exchanges are reliant upon our technology capabilities to create the Zubot. They don't have the capacity or skill set, literally, given what we've built uniquely in order to reverse engineer it and come back as an exchange linking to the wallets. So, yes, they are very excited. They want to see this happen because it's in their interests. If 10 million wallets are downloaded or 20 million wallets downloaded globally and people wish to start to buy, the only good thing is that all the current Zucoin buyers have had the opportunity to, to basically get in early because the others are going to have to come in and that's a mass volume. It comes back to that uh, Zoo time I did. All of this relates to the, the, the differential between supply and demand. And I haven't changed my position on that. You can revisit that. MV equals PT. Quantity theory of money. So those issues and questions there, that's, that's the focus because that's the focus of our current Zucoinus community. When are we listing? When are we listing? We are listing, and it'll be in that time zones now that we know we're comfortable with because the core of the wallets are working perfectly. It's live, it's real, deliverable, and now with that satisfaction done, that makes the job easier as we've been building through the last uh, couple of months and working now in full throttle in terms of the Zubot. Now that's the that's the exchange linkage. What I'm more concerned about is that the team here has been building mass database for release of mass wallets. Now, mass wallets, mass demand globally creates the interest of which then puts that demand into that formula. Now, I can't do anything in terms of letting the team loose in dropping 10 million wallets through our augmented reality programs because we can't automate the deliverable of the instantaneous coins to 10 million wallets, which is the same issue that the exchanges want in terms of the Zubot. Now think about that. I could use our clients and our database of the, the current um, client base that we have through the exchanges, and we'd release 40 million wallets. Then what? If we look at the convention, we had 350 successful wallets over two days manually transferred into those, those wallets, as we are doing currently with the rest of the wrap-up in terms of the ZooCoin uh, community. So I need the ZooBot more urgently than anybody else that's involved with ZooCoins because I've got a whole team out there that want to be unleashed through all sorts of projects to get the coins out and about through the wallets. Just, the, just think about uh, the system where we've got to get one million, one free coin to one million wallets. We want to do that in nanoseconds, and that can be achieved through the Zubot. So the urgency I have is at the highest level, not because of the exchange. That, that, that keeps all the Zucoinists uh, in, a, in a happy space, and that's a short-term happy space. Mine's a long-term happy space. And I need the Zubot for that purpose. Now, the, the third motivation of the Zubot comes back to think about online businesses. They want to accept coins. Now, I've talked earlier that you, we've got, you know, you get a coffee shop and they, they, the owner is, uh, knows the coins. He's got coins and he's happy to take coins if a person comes in and they transact as you would peer-to-peer. -peer. That's a live peer-to-peer -peer environment today. If you look at an online businesses that we're looking, talking to, they need the Zubot because they've got to automate and process the transactions instantaneously. Remember I men mentioned earlier, if you put a friction in front of somebody, that is an, an online friction of a form, or you take too long, or that process, you lose that customer. We had, a, as I said, a 14% success rate in Queensland, which is phenomenal when you think about the friction that was put in play in order to get a wallet. The wallet was easy, but in order to get the coin. And that's usually at 2.3%. So the Zubot automates that process. That if you have a Shopify and it becomes a payment option to pay crypto to crypto, 
and they want to use it because it's open source. This is not me putting this in play. This is because it's an open source zoobot that allows the floodgates to be opened in relation to product, which is what we can achieve far more uh, aggressively than Bitcoin could ever do. Why? Because there's no fees on the transfer and there's fractional uh, amounts. Now, those amounts are significant because then you're suddenly getting into the opportunity that the merchants have got no risk. There's no chargebacks on the credit cards. There's no customers ringing up saying, I didn't do that transaction, but in reality, I really did. I'm just not going to tell anybody because I'll get a refund from the bank. And the merchant cops it. How do I know that? Because that's the processing industry I've been involved for 20 years. So they have reserves and risks. Consumer thinks that he just pays on his card and buys a $4.50 cup of coffee and pays by Visa and MasterCard, and that's the end of the day. But that's not the end of the day. That mightn't be your card. There's a risk to the merchant. ZooCoins has eliminated that risk through the two-factor authentication that's not available, as far as I'm aware, anywhere in the world in terms of crypto or even in terms of, of current processing with cards. Sure, you get a four-digit pin, and as someone, Medibank comes along, Russians hack the entire database and that stuff's out there. Game over. What's the next job? Oh, well, get it from the bank and I'll get a new card. Close down the accounts. It's a disaster. The Zubot identifies sender and receiver, which gives that comfort to the merchant. Which means that there's no data in the hands of the merchant in terms of the coins again. It's only when the transaction's affected. It's the same scenario, those three scenarios. One, exchanges, mass volume, mass consumers, retention of your own property, never sits with the exchange. Data is yours. If you lose it, that's, that's your problem. Because you don't listen to what we've been pushing hard for 12 months is the way in which you back up and restore, back up, restore, back up, restore. It's not hard. The second scenario, mass global distribution i need the mass global distribution i'd love it today i'd love the zoobot tomorrow morning you'd be amazed the clients on that database that will explode the growth of the wallets and we know that because the wallets are so good so good to get into people's phones and hands now one of the one of the side issues is is that this is this is technology that no one else has got no one else is going to bother building it for the reasons I've just explained because it's all free and you can build on it, blah, blah, blah. But all of that software code, the issues that we've got, and one day we'll publish it because to get to version 167, you would be amazed of the amount of hardware problems in each of the phones that people have had that's got nothing to do with us. If it was pure software code that would be put in play, then this wouldn't have been an issue either. So we overcome those hurdles. And the little one is the most recent one, where version 167, as I said, that gives the opportunity for Android users now not to have issues with some of the paste. Because there's, there's functionality where both hardware suppliers are trying to disengage and dis disable certain functions. And there's a workaround with that. Those solutions are unique to the software code that's being built. But we're satisfied. We are 100% satisfied with the excitement of the live wallet and coins and what's happening within that 3,266. Not necessarily everybody, but certainly the key players that are now realising the power of that peer-to-peer. -peer. And the third one, which I've just talked about, is the Zubot in the hands and the freedom to those that want to receive in bulk the transactions around the world and what can happen. Now, that leads me to say, if you look at the big picture, that's where I'm from. We're coming from a big picture scenario because at the end of the day, all of that bundles itself up into someone wants either the ZooCoin or more ZooCoins. And those that have currently got them should be pretty excited and happy and grateful that you were able to come in. Why do I say that? Even with the collapse around the world, just think about Bitcoin. Oh, it's down, it's down to 16 thousand us it's down it's you know you know i we, we've modeled ourselves on comparing to bitcoin all those other coins they do nothing i said it from day dot the day that i went to singapore 
and they were promoting a banana coin. Yeah, that's right, a banana coin. You get so many pounds of bananas based on the coin that's linked to the, 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 the growers of the bananas. Well, that's all gone pear-shaped. There was the patent coin. I mean, there's no value in those things in terms of what you can do with it, end-user case scenarios. So if you think of that and you think of the, the globalisation aspect, that leads us into take a look at some of the analysts that take a longer-term view. Now, one of those is ARK Investment. Now, Kathy Wood, she is bullish still on Bitcoin. She made a prediction that she still see Bitcoin in the year 2030 at $1 million per coin. Now, whether that's right or not, that was the promotional view because of the underlying technology. There's only so many Bitcoins, but there's a technology you can build on. Now, Bitcoin can hit a wall because it can't scale. It cannot continue this massive log of blockchain pumping out with these miners where there's an environmental issue, you know, we are near zero carbon emission because guess what? All the transactions in your phone. So whatever you do with your phone, that's your carbon emission. It's not generated by massive powers of engine or, or hydro schemes or solar schemes that are trying to fill the void and, and, and create a miner. I mean, a miner is a simple exercise in trying to make sure what you have is real. It's validating the transaction. That's all it's doing. It's, it should be no big deal. It's like a cash book. Now, if you take ARC, the scenario is, and the, the substance to that project values that they're talking, it's not me talking here, I'm just, just reporting, you can look it up yourself. It was published, it was a published report called Big Ideas 2022. Now, there's three major scenarios that they've alluded to in terms of why that would evolve if you take a big picture and you get it right. You get the core technology right. You don't get pressured because you want to rush out and do this or rush out and do that just for the sake of this short-term gain. You get it right. You get the wallet right. You get the coins right. You get everything right. You get the security right. You get the comfort right. All those things and boxes are ticked. The last one now is getting the Zubot right. And we'll do that. I mean, I'm hoping it's earlier because, as I said, I want to get 20, 30, 40 million wallets out there. Drop them around the world through our augmented reality. Hamstrung. I can't do any of that. It's even difficult to even want to look at, say, bulk selling at $100 a coin on the website. We're not encouraging that because we can't process 20, 50, 100, 300,000 transactions. Be off our tree. We need the Zubot. Now, these reports, there's three categories which all fit into the profile of split chain in the long term, what it means if you're holding a coin, either Bitcoin or Zucoin. So think of this in the context of the split chain. There's massive interest and growth in, the, in public blockchains. And this is because there's an evolution that's occurring in those public blockchains. Now you can look that up, see what she's talking about. That's not the one that I'm interested in really, but I'm just making the point. The second is Bitcoin itself. Now, because of the, the, the nature of Bitcoin, despite the drop, and I'd say it'll bounce back. I mean, FTX, FTX to me is, uh, we didn't like that exchange when we did our due diligence from day dot. I don't like Binance either, but um, you know, in crypto.com, what's gonna happen with that one? So there's a few big ones that, were of concern because the way in which they were having retention of coins or crypto and using those to their advantage to make additional money on it. You know, you want to have, which we've got the ability with what's called non-custodial ownership. It's never sits with the exchange. But even if you want to do that, you reduce the risk by not having an exchange that basically takes your coins and makes money on it and says, we'll promise to pay it out and retop up, you know, when you want to sell. So that's what the outflow is about. People said, I'm panicking, I need to get my coins, and they couldn't because they were put into other stupid projects. In the FTX case, it was the FTT coin. I mean, an absolute nonsense token doing nothing with a stupid value that did nothing that was fully funded by real coins in the sense of Bitcoin or Ethereum. I mean, even Solana for that as, as, a, as another example, but Doge, which is promoted by Elon Musk, which started as a joke coin, the functionalities haven't changed and they only get worse. So Bitcoin was a, was a 
very big component in that valuation modeling she did because of the blockchain, what you can do with the blockchain, what others can do with it, but they're still hamstrung. It's like Ethereum. There's only so far you can go because of the costs. Developers come in here, away they go. Now, what really got my attention of that report was her analysis of digital wallets. And the friction point was getting wallets into the hands of consumers efficiently, easily, without any issues in terms of the way in which they can manage those wallets without third parties. It hasn't happened. But she says in the report, in ARC's view, digital wallets could scale at an annual rate of 69% in the US from more than 400 billion in market capitalization to 5.7 trillion and 78% globally from 1.1 trillion to $20 trillion in the next five years. And you're sitting on the wallets. You're sitting on the coin that is the lever to the developers. But no one's got a wallet that you can pump out 20 or 30 or 40 million wallets. And just think about the, the strategy on our market. At 14% success rate, that's with the friction. You take that friction away. We estimate we'll get 25%. 25% take up that you'll get a wallet and you want to do something with it. That is, with the Zubot, away you go, you'll do your exchange, or you'll trade amongst yourselves as peers, which you can do right now. Right here and now is a live functioning wallet coins. Our stats tell us, so if we send out on those numbers, 10 million wallets, that's 2 million wallet take up. If those 2 million wallets, and we know from the numbers from where we're at with the current database and what we explored, what's expanded in terms of just Queensland as a, as a sample, albeit a small sample, people generally get excited about wanting to buy another three to 10 coins if they've got one or a fraction. And more importantly, they refer it to family and friends or connections within their contacts lists by another factor of 10. You cannot get such a viral effect of distribution of wallets into the hands of mass population, unless you've got something like the wallet we've created, the PWA and the ease of which you get it. We don't have any failure rates of people now with their wallets, as in getting a download wallet. With the hard work that was done to get through Apple and Android, the hardware, the hardware is the problem, not the software. So, do the maths. Now, that distribution, there are merchants, there are connections that we've got that want to get the distribution out because it's to their advantage in order to use the crypto. Either they want to make layers on top, uh, and those layers, by the way, that puts people in the financial sector, that if they're going to do that and they're going to make money, then, of course, they'll be fully regulated because they're going to be, under Australian laws at least, they'll need AFSL licensing, they'll need all of the regulatory provisions, and there's your consumer comfort on another level. They'll need the KYC, they'll need the AML compliance. Suddenly you've got this freedom of the product with layers depending on what those products turn into. Remember the farmer, he sells, he grows the wheat, and at the end of the day it ends up as a loaf of bread. ends up as a loaf of bread. There's an ad value product. There was a question there that came in that, um, you know, it's the restrictions in relation to, it's not the hardware. Well, I, I want to correct that. It's, it is the hardware. Depending on the age of the phone and the upgrades, it's the hardware. It's got nothing to do with the software. The software uh, on I, iPhone 14, for example, schmick, because the hardware is accommodating all those sort of changes and upgrades. So of all of the transactional volumes we've been using and doing, the software is absolutely perfect and fine. We've got some people who've got old models of phones and we've recommended don't go running around with an iPhone 6. That's, the, that's a hardware issue. 
not a software. And there are problems that even with some of the upgrades that, for example, uh, Apple introduced uh, disabling some functions in relation to certain things because, but they're coming under pressure because the uh, anti-monopoly laws are saying that you've got to start to free up your own software as well because developers are coming in. Now, recently, Apple's announced they're going to try and control NFT processes so they can get another 30% fee as they do through the iStore. Well, that won't last long. The European uh, Monopolies Commissions aren't going to have a bar of that. Now, we don't have that problem because it's open source. We don't care what you build on it. What I do care is that I'm fortunate enough to have some coins through my trusts, and I'm very happy with that. And if it turns out that the developers come in and everybody makes more money, well, good luck to them. And good luck to the institutions that might adopt it. So digital wallets, that's that's an opportunity that once the Zubot again, massive priority, that includes under that code engine, the node scalabilities that we've uh, already put in place. Because if you think about it, and we're talking uh, 50, 100 million wallets, the nodes themselves are in a unique position because they're not storing uh, very small minutes of cache data per, per wallet. Uh, the network can cope and, and handle it. I would invite some people to think about some of the technology going way back with Spotify. There's a great Netflix movie called Playlist. And there's a scene in that movie of the developers con being confronted with the problem of paying massive server fees per month because they can't cope with the network of what you would say is a simple exercise in getting you a, a soundbite, you know, a music. Have a look at that because they thought outside the box. And they realise that each of the persons that have got a computer or phones, not necessarily the phone, but certainly computers, could turn into nodes. And they can actually store the bits and take the pressure off the main centralised service. The centralised server becomes sort of just a backup. Now, there's a lot involved with that because you, if you want to make it scalable and you want it on the explosion growth that we talk about, then those issues also form part and parcel of things we've been looking at and addressing chip by chip and condensing, look at the flow rates in relation to the data, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to be held underneath in terms of the software. And you solve those and they've been solved. That's what will get the excitement going. So uh, again, Zubot, 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 Zubot. You guys are all excited on the exchanges. Uh, we've got young Riley there, our financials uh, officer. Um, he's communicating literally um, you know, weekly with each of the exchanges. They want, to, they want to know exactly how they sit because they want to get involved. So there's no question about uh, what we're doing with the exchanges and they want to see the developments and they understand the technology because it's the dev teams that on both sides at the end of the day that deliver that. For me, I'm more keen Zubot marketing because that marketing will satisfy the demands of people with coins and wallets which gives that encouragement to say, well, demand is greater than the supply and therefore you work out the outcome. But if, the, if you can't do the Zubot on the demand side with wallets, then you'll end up with things like what's happened because they haven't thought things through in terms of those poor 30,000 Australians that now can't get anything out of FTX, let alone the, the ones overseas that are in real trouble, big trouble. And I know a lot of you don't take the time, but all of this I put in play 16 months through each of the zoo time as to where I saw the markets were going, both crypto and share markets, where I saw the market for mass, mass adoption and why we will stand out amongst the uh, uh, other, other pathetic coins that are out there, which, which are all now getting pushed into mass re regulation because that's what they are. They're just scam things that talk about enticing with some some uh, additional security uh, level in terms of being a security, which then puts them into play, and they're worthless. And you can see that by the drop. I mean, the FTT was a coin produced by FTX, and it's zero. That's why companies like Sequoia have dropped $291 million and written it off worthless.
because they haven't thought through the long-term issues that we've addressed one by one. I mean, we're getting interest from uh, environmentalist groups because it's a solution, both the protocol, the split chain, as well as the coins, to making sure that our carbon footprint is near negligible. We're not affecting the carbon issues because it's in your phone. Make that point. Very greening. So I then wanted to lead into bringing it, uh, it's been a bit long, but we haven't been together for a long time. So these are the things that you can revisit this video. You can, you can satisfy yourselves. We, we've ticked the box all the way because our motivation and my motivation and interest is if I'm a coin holder, which I am like you guys, the last thing I want to do is end up losing them, not backing up or not being in a position to control them, that I'm reliant on some third party through the whole chain of events of crypto. You know, an exchange that collapse basically has got nothing to do with the core primary technology of blockchain. The, the Bitcoin can, keeps going, subject to the miners that I've talked about. In our case, it won't worry us at all because it's out open sourced and the nodes are just sitting there and away they go. We'd have a million nodes, which won't bring the, the uh, network crashing down. But the point is, Blockchain, Bitcoin is still trading, doesn't need that exchange. It's what the human element did and that lack of trust to the consumer that caused the problem. I'm not sitting in our organisation on any coins relating to those now that have wallets and coins. There's no trust element with our lenders. That's why we want to encourage that it's in our interest and the quicker we get the last lot out, the better. It's got nothing to do with the Zubot exchange, but nevertheless, you know, that puts pressure on us because we've suddenly become, these coins are sitting there waiting to go out as per the purchase contract. So get the things out, put them in your wallet and follow the protocols and process. There's a ton of information on the website. The videos are being done, not because we like making them, but because they have to be done so that you can visualize and see each of the steps of the coins and the wallets, which are live and how important that is. Now, when I look at the, the current events, I briefly touched on FTX, you know, absolutely crazy time, crazy time, but understandable in the context of the model that was put in play by that exchange. You know, we were nervous about someone that says they can just willy-nilly grab your coins that are on the exchange and go and use the damn things. And I don't, I don't want anybody to use my coins. I work too hard. I don't mind if there's if, if I sell some on the exchange, that's fine. And at least I'm, I've got to, you know, we're hoping that work we're doing, because if, if you want to sell a coin on exchange or I want to sell a coin, we want to at least know we get paid. So that's the due diligence we do that says, okay, there's less risk with exchanges A, B, C, and D. We'll grab those. They're not necessarily the biggest exchanges, but... Their profile is they're more regulated. That's why we put on the website the legal documents in relation to our coin in those jurisdictions, Europe, Singapore, and Australia, which is the, the nature of the beast in terms of the exchanges. Because whatever risk you're taking, I'm taking the same. No good me selling $100 million worth and, and it's sitting in the FTX account with a liquidator because it's an unsecured credit and you can't get the damn thing. So just think about the importance of how that relates to the time we take with the Zubot to get it right, which is what we're doing. And again, quarter one, 2023, for all those that want to get the times in that cycle, that means from today, the end of March, 2023. That's it. So the website will show the roadmaps that we are in progress on that basis. Current events. FTX was one of them. Now, it's interesting when you look at the asset classes of the crypto. The whole market space has come out of the blocks as though this is the, uh, the end of the world with crypto. This is one of the most exciting times you could ever possibly have in terms of where we sit with a crypto asset. Well, I say that because we see ourselves as a differential for all the reasons I've just talked about. But I've been around long enough to know that it doesn't matter what 
industry sector you're in, I don't care what it is, treasuries, shares, bonds, derivatives, whatever it is, they are all susceptible to going down the toilet. Now, 1987 was my first uh, touch up in terms of the financial institutions that you talk about blue chip stocks and they were worthless. Couldn't give them away. People may, may know the names of Bell Group. All those big institutions that you had uh, back then. You know, the ownership in terms of Adelaide Steamship with some of the best companies under its umbrella, Woolies. We still shop at Woolies, then we went down the toilet, resurrected a couple of times. But they're making a big hoo-ha about this crypto space. It, what happened with FTX didn't happen because of the blockchain or Bitcoin. It happened because a gang of university kids, basically, put together this incredible corporation, funded by these people, God knows why, putting in billions of dollars, and lifting it up that that's what you relied on. That institution was a trading exchange. It's supposed to be a bookie, moves one money, one transaction to another and takes a fee. It's not hard. But it is hard when you move that money, $10 billion, transfer it to a subsidiary called Alameda, run by that young girl, Carolyn Elson. God help us all. Have a look at the videos on her. Just get a, I just get a shudder down the spine thinking about it, in charge of... $50 billion portfolio. And it goes down the toilet. But it goes down the toilet because of human intervention. Mistrust. Computer algorithms in the proper way, which is what's happened with Split Chain and ZooCoin, you're not reliant upon third party trust. It looks for the trust in the nodes, and the nodes are simply just little engines of computers running that say yay or nay, binary, one or zero, pretty simple. But the moment the industry now talks about this collapse, this collapse of the crypto space, I say it's the best opportunity ever. If I look back at the internet, the internet will never work, they said. Emails will never work. Browsers went out of business. Probably no one even knows about Netscape. Microsoft come along, Internet Explorer. The big companies nearly went down the toilet. MySpace, bang. I mean, the list goes on. Web crawler. But what comes out is the cream rises above. And you get those beautiful companies that have turned into trillion dollar beasts because they took advantage of the market. It cleared out all the clutter. You know, the best thing that's happened is there's 19,000 coins you don't have to worry about looking for. I mean, if anybody downloads, <coughs> which you may not do, but it's worth downloading, I've had a look. The filing of the bankruptcy papers by FTX USA. It's bloody scary. Have a look at the coins in the list, which is in their portfolio. It's extraordinary. Most of the commentators don't even know what the coins are or their, their weirdo names. They just make them up. So there's no value in those assets. There's nothing there. And again, it's the greatest company that was interconnected with all of the regulators on the planet. Where the hell were they? Nowhere. So for me, as long as the core is there, the internet core technology, the internet itself was there. It was going to survive and grow. And then people were building on it. Companies were building on it. The moment the companies had a human content to it and doing things, they're susceptible to that lack of trust or mistrust that can send them down. Now, just think about the last couple of days. The reports are that people are panicking in the exchanges around the world to get their coins back into cold storage, that is offline or non-custodial, your own wallets, which is something that's already a feature by default in the ZooCoin wallet. You're in possession of your coins as, you, as I sit here right here and now. No one else can touch them unless you screw it up. Screw it up yourself. You don't back it up, you deserve to lose it. You back it up, you can restore it. But you're in possession. Now, the latest stats are saying 
that the Bitcoin supply on, on exchanges, that is where you're forced to leave your coins in order to trade or sell, won't happen with ZooCoins, is the lowest it's ever been since April 2018 when Bitcoin was $6,900 US. What does that tell you? People are losing faith in the exchanges for the very reasons we've talked about. You can't get certainty on transfers. You can't get certainty of what's in your wallet in terms of held by the exchange. You're an unsecured creditor. I mean, to be fair, what the media should be talking about is the same screw-ups are happening in the banks. The only difference is the banks have got enough money to pay you out and no one blinks twice. Government backed, yeah, rah, rah. Unlike a private company like FTX. Now, it lost 50 billion. Where does that sit in the in the whole perspective of things? That's a blimp. That's neither here nor there in the context of the overall global financial environment. Why do I say that? Well, let's just have a look at another stat. Now, let's say your pension fund, your super fund, government funds, where, where are your source, your source bulk money from, had invested in the last 12 months in Alphabet, which is your Google, Microsoft, Meta, which is your Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, Netflix, and Apple. Now, that's a pretty, pretty nice, you know, your investment advisors would say that's a pretty good portfolio. They're blue chip stocks. They're all making money. Fantastic. Well, guess what? In that 12 months to date, the total market capitalization lost of that group of seven is $3 trillion. You want me to say that again? Those seven companies in 12 months, their market capitalization has dropped by $3 trillion. Now you might say that's a paper loss. Well, go and tell that to the poor bugger that bought them at the peak. Go and tell that to the, the best one here, I mean, it's a cracker, is Apple. I mean, good old Apple, $739 billion down the toilet. And the great man, Warren Buffett, now he's only had a paper loss, but he's dropped $39 billion. He's back to the cost price he paid, $31 billion. Now, Berkshire Hathaway shareholders have suffered because they didn't trade out of it, taking a long-term hold on it, $39 billion. But the media seems to want to report that one entity, FTX, drops $50 billion in the context of the financial world that we're currently facing is a disaster for crypto. I think it's fantastic. It's cleaning out a lot of the deadwood. It's cleaning out a lot of the exchanges that shouldn't be there. And it's focusing people on those products and entities that can come out of it as these companies did that, were nearly, that nearly hit the wall. Now, history will keep repeating that, that that's what happens in these sort of calamities. I mean, Apple was 90 days away from bankruptcy. 90 days. It flatlined a share price at a dollar or so for 20 years before it hit its straps to become, even now, it's still a $2 trillion company. But Steve Jobs got back, and guess what? Bill Gates put $150 million in and saved the day. So this is an incredible environment that you're going to see those that can come out of the blocks with the right products, with the core technology that will explode. I'd like to think that given what the successes we've now had with our technology and the last bit, which explodes the capacity for growth and demand, that's the Zubot on those three fronts, exchange, mass adoption, product sale, direct free software, open source code. Every dog and his cat can go out and use it. They don't need to ring up our office here and say, can we use ZooCoins or, or Split Chain? Just use the thing. Just like you guys as peers. You don't have to sit there waiting for me. Go and get the excitement with it and trade your coins directly. We're going to fire it up here what we want to do, but that doesn't stop you 
as a peer in a decentralized environment from enjoying and sharing the wallet experience because it's live. That was the mandate. It's live. Now, that's one group of companies. It gets better. As I said earlier in the broadcast, Bitcoin. It's one of the class assets of the last five years. So from, well, it's from July 2017, so five and a bit years, but it's represented 840% in gains in that period. That's pretty spectacular. Gold has underperformed. You just said what the big companies are taking a hit. I mean, you can't just vaporize $3 trillion and say that's just a blimp because that's real money going in at those prices. Somebody somewhere on the planet has bought those high-valued shares and done their dough. And it could very well be you because your super fund that you're in could have shares in US equities and they could have bought them at the highest price. Now, they don't care. Why? They're still getting their fees. You're not going to retire till 65. They might have 20 or 30 years to recover. <clears throat> That's the nature of the game. Now, that $3 trillion in, in percentage terms, so this is from uh, January this year, January this year to November. Apple, down 18%. Microsoft, 34%. Google, Alphabet, 39%. Amazon, 44%. Tesla, 38%. Now, there will be other companies that will come out of the blocks because they realised that these companies have had a free ride in terms of those in the advertising space. Microsoft's a little bit different, but certainly they've centralised and controlled all your data. And they're making money on it. And all of a sudden, they're taking a hit. Web3 comes along, decentralizes, which is what we are doing now, decentralization of the split chain and the coins as identifiers and all the things I talked in my earlier, it's zoo time. All of that will come to fruition. Decentralized Web3 means that you start to control your destiny. You're controlling your financial destiny with those coins now. You are your own bank. You've got coins in a ZooCoin wallet. That's you. You are controlling that destiny. How it behaves, what it does, where it's going to end up. And we're kickstarting it. But the momentum is based on those that now get excited, which is what we got from the convention. The convention was crucial because the convention said, yes, a 15-year-old or an 87-year-old can use the wallet and do the coins. More importantly, the developers have said, how cool is this? We can build what we like because there's no one taking a fee from us. There's no Apple taking a fee. There's no Google taking a fee. You can actually be in control of your own destiny in terms of advertising and your data that you've got. You know, the ZooCoin identifier, which is a fraction of a coin, can actually identify with any third party based on the way in which that third party wants to identify you. You wouldn't have had a Medicare issue in terms of the, the data hacks that have happened and stealing all your data. It doesn't need to reside with that third party. can talk more on that as well. But these are the sort of add-on projects that can be built on the chain. Now, in simple terms, just as just a quick look at the, the destiny concept, you have money in the bank with CBA or a bank. And you have money or coins in a ZooCoin wallet. The destiny means because you've got it in your ZooCoin wallet, you are responsible from start to finish of that wallet and those coins. You can't ring up the Commonwealth Bank and say, I didn't do that transaction. I want a refund. We got lazy. We got lazy because we can rely on that third party to think about and talk about the way in which someone else should pay for my irresponsibility in what I'm doing with my finances. There's a world change coming here. And at the end of the day, the poor old bank pays you 
And then what happens? The shareholders suffer. And they don't care. They raise more money. So they get it from other bodies, other super funds. So the pensioners suffer. Because everybody's funding each other for someone else's stuff up. You can't ring somebody up with a ZooCoin wallet and beg and plead that you lost 20 or 30 coins and you want a refund. That is your responsibility. That's the difference of what's heading with this crypto space, if it's done right. That's why we took so long to solve those issues, to make it as flexible as possible, as secure as possible, that you understand the risks and you know exactly where you're going with your wallet. Now you take the banks. The banks got lazy. Have a look at the website. I've put this up there. All of a sudden they're checking every transactions because they've got their own scam problems. They can't stop the scams. So they say we're checking your transactions on the way in, on the way out. Why? Because the government said we need to have KYC AML. Well, they do. Legally, the banks need to do that. But they become agents of the government because the government got lazy. How do we know that? Because the banks have got penalties. The Commonwealth Bank pleaded guilty to 30 criminal charges in relation to its behaviour as a bank. 30 criminal charges. Now, the funny twist to that is the bank takes the criminal hit but they can't find one person in the bank to be charged. That's not me talking. That's coming out of the Royal Commissions because they're ripping off customers. They're charging dead people. They're charging for accounts that don't exist. That's where you lose the destiny of your finances. That's what I'm talking about, that everybody's shoveling it to the next party to remove that responsibility. I mean, the bank under the Constitution with the Banking Act simply has a job to do. Move money from A to B and lend it out if they need to. Of which you say, my money, my deposit, I've ticked the box and I'm going to let the bank do that. You've lost that responsibility. You've shoveled it to someone else. And therefore there are outcomes. Why do you think banks are shutting down accounts? They're debanking people. Because they're scared in terms of their own KYC and what they're doing. And they can't cope. They become agents of the government to satisfy provisions in relation to what is required by Austrac and others as to this globalisation of anti-money uh, and laundering laws. And that's quite right. Catch the crooks. The interesting thing is it's been far easier for the regulators to trace and track all the transactions in FT, uh, FTX through the blockchain than it has when HSBC went down for shoveling $35 billion of Mexican, Mexican cartel money and got penalised $1.6 billion. But think about the penalties. The consumer suffers again because the banks just increase their fees and they take it out of shareholders. It's a revolving door. The destiny of this, of crypto, the trust is in the algorithms. The trust is in the open code, open source code. You remove the miners in the case of Bitcoin. You do that, you don't need to worry about the power being turned off. I mean, the concentration that's now happening in Ethereum and Bitcoin blockchain of the miners is exceeding 51% in some instances. What does that mean? If they got together, they can block those transactions. That is because they know the wallet address. You could be sitting on $200 million of crypto and they won't process it for you. They're already doing that now. If you look at the research and you see the companies that are involved with that processing in the terms of them as miners or those that have got centralised coins, which you've got to be careful of because they promote them as, yes, they do this, A, B and C, but again, there's central servers that can switch you on and off whenever they feel like it or produce more coins. And that was half the problem with FTX. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's the entirety of where we sit. I'm excited about the development that's happened. It, it just creates such a refreshing opportunity that I've seen probably three times in my lifetime 
that I thought I would miss out on again in terms of my 23-year battle with the government, which is a side uh, distraction, going well, by the way. You can look that up as that gets that close to the High Court. But the point is this window has opened. There'll be a lot more catastrophes coming, not just in the crypto sector. Again, look at the perspective. Three trillion in the top seven companies, 50 million billion for FTX. You've got to sit back and look at what they're talking about in terms of the overall context of it. For us, for me, for the staff, for those family and friends, all the boxes we have been ticking, we're satisfied that we are making some amazing inroads as of today that I'm comfortable with the way in which you deal with each other, sending and receiving coins. I mean, look, people laughed at us about the time clock, the 90 seconds. We did that for good measure. Now, there's a classic example. This is on the, uh, the 14th of November. Big heading around the world. Crypto.com sent 400 million to the wrong recipient, but luckily got it back. Can you believe that? When you deal with the current cryptos, it's one-way traffic. And that was the problem we had when we started down that path with the SMS. And we got heavily criticised for the delays and problems and, you know, you're not meeting your timelines, blah, blah, blah. But the reality sunk in. If you send through any crypto wallet outside of ZooCoins and you get the address wrong, it's gone, kapoof. Now, luckily for crypto.com, they went to another exchange and that exchange was quite uh, kind enough to say, yes, we acknowledge there's a wrong amount of coin that's uh, entered into our wallet and we'll send it back. But that could have been to anybody. Now, they've already had a bad experience with that, which has gone to the courts here in Melbourne and Victoria. Crypto.com was supposed to send 69 bucks ended up sending 10 million. The recipients have had a, 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 an amazing time with the 10 million. Everybody's in court trying to get it back. Supreme Court, have a look at that. So the point again, we analyse it, the heavy research, it's like bank accounts. You know, if you send it to the wrong BSB and account number, sure, the other bank will try and get it back from the, the recipient. There'll be an inquiry. They may send it back, it might take four weeks. But you, again, rely on the banks as the trusted third party to help you out. Crypto, you got no chance. Send it to the wrong address, it was gone. And basically, that's what happened. We had the SMS working to perfection. You could send a coin on the first versions of our software to anybody with a phone number and instantly get a wallet and a coin. Unbelievable marketing concepts. It was a disaster. We had a 30% failure rate. People put in the wrong country code, didn't get rid of the zeros. The telcos got involved. They treated it as a scam. They blocked the, the SMS. Now, the huge amount of work done to build a world-first two-factor authentication is extraordinary. Only you could screw up the transfer because, because you've got to know who the recipient is. You're on a time clock. You can't screw it up. And if it doesn't go through, the transaction stays in your wallet. It gives you a rejection. But both sender and receiver know who they're dealing with. That's the advantage we have with the exchanges because the exchanges now know that wherever the coins are coming from, they're going to go to person peer A to peer B. Therefore, they can affect the transaction. Same with the merchants. Same with the mass marketing. That will be a global revolution in itself because you've got certainty on what you're doing with that asset that you are transferring. And I'm so proud of that. I'm proud of what Robert and the team put together with that. It's a pleasure to see it operating. You know, we, we've had massive amount of coins in dollar value going through Treasury here, and it hits its target every time. No one can deny the receipt of the coin or lie and cheat and say they didn't get it or it's missing. 
you can't beat the system through algorithms and trust outside of human trust. And that's what I love about it. So, look, it's been an amazing uh, time. Uh, everybody's working through, this, except for the public holidays. Uh, we are full throttle. We know all that. We know that, yeah, we'd all, as I would like to see the action mode on Zubot finish tomorrow, won't happen. But we are putting it in there without the undue pressure to make sure it's right. The logging, the tracking, the testing. Testing is extraordinary that's been done. And the best testers have been, thank to you guys, 3,266 wallet addresses that give us an amazing amount of back-end data that ticks the boxes as what we want to see as a deliverable. So leave the heavy lifting to our team here, I'm going to assure you. They're, they're not sitting idle. Uh, so much in, uh, in fact that I'm going to close with an opportunity that came up uh, because of all this crypto chaos um, that the media is hyping it up worse than it is. Uh, because remember, I come back to ARK Investments. Think of the core technology. Think of the days of the internet. Companies went down, but the internet kept going. The core technology. We have incredible core technology. So I'm going to leave you with this, that as a result of that, an opportunity came up, which we've taken. And uh, we're sending out a notice uh, that will go out, I think, after this uh, live uh, video. And apologies for going so long. But um, I won't be doing one this side of Christmas. Uh, wishing you all a unbelievable Merry Christmas and um, a wonderful New Year coming. And maybe the surprise this time will be the reverse, that we suddenly announced the Zubots finished a lot quicker than we'd, uh, we'd anticipated. And uh, that would be delightful because we can get into action mode big time. But uh, the opportunity was that as a result of the FTX collapse, uh, we got uh, offered the naming right sponsor um, for the FinTech 22 conference, which we'll send out a notice on this. And that uh, is set for the 30th of November to the 1st of December. Um, the entire team has been busy with that. We are ready. Uh, we've slotted in to take that. So the FinTech 22 is being presented by ZooCoins. Um, it was, uh, you know, from a, from a cost exercise, it was negligible. But had we, uh, you know, locked in earlier, it, it would have been a, a, a massive expenditure in our marketing budget we didn't have because I'm more focused on distribution through the connections that we've got. But nevertheless, it's a wonderful opportunity for the team. Our focus at FinTech 22 is to showcase SplitChain and ZooCoins from a institutional perspective. So we've done the retail at the convention in Queensland. We understand now and we're very delighted with the wallet and all the things that happens with it, the live wallet, the live coins, the live peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, but this particular uh, FinTech 22, there are some very prominent uh, businesses involved. You'll see the links. Uh, we're very excited to connect with those businesses about and showcase what I've talked to you guys about, the power of what can happen here uh, in the longer term with the split chain and what it means to those businesses uh, in terms of the advantages they can take of the split chain itself as a layer one protocol. So um, very excited about that. Uh, there'll be keynote speaking by myself um, Robert will be there, and uh, certainly um, um, he's not going to keynote speak, but uh, he gets tied up with developers, which is of our great interest that he's talking to the same ilk of people that now are another layer above just what you guys want to focus on is, oh, I've got some coins and there's an exchange, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's great. Don't get me wrong. Very important, particularly in this environment. And we're doing uh, everything we can now to convert that to where we see ourselves, that I said from day one, Bitcoin, ZooCoin, you got, you got different differential in numbers. There's no reason why, uh, even at these prices, that uh, I've said all along, you can only do some maths at a uh, 20% value, whatever Bitcoin is. And if it's at a million dollars because uh, Kathy Wood's suggesting that the technology and the underlying technology lends itself to massive development, then that's what will happen. And that's what's happened in the last 30 years with each of these uh, evolution of technology. So, um, yes, uh, the team will also be there. Uh, the marketing team um, are going to give some discussions and talks 
about the strategies we've got, which is out of the box. Um, I noticed the other day that there was an article which produced that the banks themselves, in order to gain traction and get clients on boarded, there's an, there's an annualised spend or per customer spend rather in marketing budget of $750 to $2,500 per person to get that person to sign up to an account at a bank. And um, let me tell you, uh, we, we're doing that for three-tenths of nothing if you look at the strategy that I've uh, has put together through the ability to get mass distribution of wallets instantly into people's hands uh, without the friction. So that's an indication that on one hand you could spend, you know, like crypto.com signs up to a $750 million package to be a signage on an arena. And um, that's got a long way to go in terms of customer conversions. And more so now as they've got a leakage of people panicking about getting their crypto out of crypto.com. That could be the next one to go, by the way. Um, you know, uh, Tether. Tether's another worry. If you're sitting on any Tether coins, be very concerned about that. Um, that's got all sorts of funny reserves or not funny reserves. Um, that's, that's built on smokes and mirrors. So be careful with those sort of ones if you're playing in the crypto space um, and see how you go with that. So we will welcome everybody there. We've got um, the only coffee cart that's going to be uh, at the convention and um, we're welcome to sit down and have a chat. Uh, with uh, all our zoo coiners if you show up uh, and anybody else on that front but more importantly we're pushing hard now to showcase uh, at an institutional level of what we've uh, successfully achieved well there you go ladies and gentlemen that's all from me uh try and keep the emails to a minimum into support we, we really only want people that now um if you've got a, a real desperation problem uh it'll be a user problem we know that for a fact from our database logging. Um, but if there's a real issue, uh, then let us know. Uh, let us know and come back to support to get your coins and wallet. Please complete the form because we need you to get a wallet address. Put that in the form for registration. And you also tick the box that says, I'm not stupid and I've actually backed up the file so there's no repercussions later. All right, because that's a full audit trial that we're doing. We're not doing it for fun. We're seriously doing it so that we've got uh, every single monitored coin that's had to go out has been logged in and registered to the end recipient. And we know that the recipient gets it because they get a personal phone call and that transaction occurs according to the wonderful time lock system that Robert built. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Been a pleasure. And uh, look forward to catching up. We're all available otherwise, but keep the, keep the emails to a minimum. Uh, to all the hardcore critics out there, good luck to you. Uh, we're pumped. We're excited. Don't take notice of any of that nonsense. And don't get hamstrung by the fear factor of this crypto space. It's got no lesser fear than the uh, the financial markets and the problems around the world, which I talked about as well. And uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to showcase what we've got and where we're going as the next generation crypto. Uh, I'm just going to leave you with this little uh, little uh, skit and have a think about this um, before I go. So uh, all, all, Merry Christmas to everybody. Fantastic to have you on board. Appreciate your support. Been sensational. And uh, you're all wonderful people. And uh, that's that's what a zoo coinist is. A zoo coinist is and knows that this is the future and what we're doing with it. We're 100% uh, working our asses off. So just have a listen to this and you'll get where I'm coming from. Thanks, everybody. Stick to the fundamentals. That's how IBM and Hilton were built. Good things sometimes take time.